Today I'm going to be reviewing Parrots. Parrots the book. Soon to be Parrots the movie. Actually not so soon because this book was published in 1979 uh, by TFH Publications. I believe that says TFH. That's very, very Bauhaus there. That very, very Bauhaus style typeface. TFH. And uh, they're a good publisher, though. I actually used to work at a bookstore, a, a used bookstore. And we had a bunch of these. They were very characteristic because they were always hardbound like this with no dust jacket. And they were mostly, the bindings were mostly white, but then they had really good um, photographs, photographic covers, and then photographs on the inside. And they were very informative and they're kind of evergreen content because they are, um, very rarely will you have a book like this really badly go out of date. You know, you buy a book like this about a cocker spaniel, even if it was published in the 70s or 80s, most of the stuff in there is probably still accurate. Uh, not very much of it goes out of date. Uh, and they were very high quality, and we always had a, a good, healthy shelf of them. I think maybe even a couple of shelves of them in the pet section. And so when I got my hold on this one, I still need to get the Collie one because I love Collies and I'd love to have the Collie uh, TFH book. But Parrots is a good second for me because I've always been fascinated by Parrots. And one thing that I want to point out right at the start, something that occurred to me while I was reading this book, and I did read the whole thing. I've got my green sticker of achievement there, which I put on all of my books that I've already read. And what I like about this book well, not about, I'll get to what I like about this book, but one thing I noticed, uh, realized about the parrots in this book, the, the parrots in the photographs, you see there, I did have to kind of glue it back together. It was like damaged when I got it, but see, very lovely, a lot of black and white, which is one of my criticisms, but that's partly because of the time, uh, black and white, uh, color photography, color printing was expensive back then. So you could only have a certain number of color photographs in a, in a book before it just got too expensive. So I have to kind of give them a pass on that. That was That's just of the time. But uh, what I thought was really cool when I was looking through this and looking at these parrots is because of the lifespan of some of these species of parrot, some of these parrots could still be alive today, even though this was published in 1979. And I'm recording this in 2024 it's well within the realm of possibility that a lot of these parrots are still alive. And uh, we're, in, we're still in that window. The window is going to be, is going to close over the next 20 or 30 years, but we're, we are in that window now where uh, a good number of these parrots could very well still be alive. And I was kind of moved by that when, uh, when reading this book, I've been always been fascinated by animals that have long lifespans, such as tortoises and parrots. Um, I believe elephants live a long time. But anyway, we'll get into the book here. It was written by Matthew M. Vrenz and Herbert R. Axelrod. And one thing I appreciate about their approach to this book is that they're very, um, they don't mince words. They express their opinions and they don't worry about being politically correct or, or um, controversial. Again, it was published in 1979, so that might have something to do with it. You couldn't really publish a book like this now and have it be in the same kind of uh, kind of um, attitude as this book has. Because these guys, they, they do things that you really couldn't do in books today or in, in TV shows and movies. They, um, they criticize um, indigenous tribes uh, in Central and South America for their... Uh, occasional mistreatment of macaw parrots and other parrots. They uh, criticize international law for being too overregulated when it comes to the bird trade and the animal trade, particularly Australia. They criticize Australia for being too strict about that. Their stance is that anyone should be able to own a parrot, basically any kind of a, uh, any kind of parrot, uh, especially if it's endangered. And they should be allowed to breed those parrots as much as they want. And their reasoning, which is ironclad logic, their reasoning is that a lot of these birds are severely endangered or always on the verge of being endangered. 
why not allow people to breed to breed these birds as as much as they want in order to keep these birds on the planet that's kind of the number one priority nobody wants birds to be mistreated but the number one priority especially at this time i don't know what it's like now but at this time the number one priority is let's keep these birds from going extinct let's keep them on the planet let's keep them a species and i really admire that just very logical approach you know they their their attitude is well you know a lot of people may have birds and they may not be know how to treat them properly and some might even get mistreated and as tragic as that is the most important thing is is keeping the species alive so those kind of frank and blunt opinions uh, you don't read in books very much especially these days so I appreciated that really not, not not much to say here I mean see there are different sections feeding your parrot breeding parrots how to begin training your parrot how to train your bird to talk very cool stuff I mean like pretty much anything that that a pet uh, owner a parrot owner would want to know today they go they show uh, many beautiful uh, species here I hope they're all still uh, with us one minor criticism I have is that they do kind of um, split the photos and the and the text in a weird way so that you know what I would do is I would have the text and the photo be on the same page or at least on opposite pages I would try as much as possible to do that because reading it is kind of dry if you don't have the photo and so the way the the book is arranged in that way I'm not crazy about I would kind of prefer that they but it might again have had something to do with the printing limitations because arranging a book like this, especially when it with photographs, I actually worked for um, a telephone book company, and uh, the the issues that we ran into with uh, getting everything to fit on a page um, were considerable. So I can imagine that um, similar with a book, a, a book with photographs or illustrations. But I think it maybe could have done a little bit, been done a little bit better. See, it's like. A block of text and then a block of photos and that got that happens mostly at the end of the book and uh, that you know I kind of skimmed the end because of that it made it a little bit less readable but the stuff about you know basic like how to like cages and aviaries feeding your parrot that that kind of stuff about like about how to take care of your bird not so much like showing you the different species that stuff was pretty ironclad, but this stuff, um, even though it wasn't arranged as well, the photographs were still very nice to look at. I would love to have a parrot. I've only seen one macaw parrot in my entire life. That was at a, a pet store uh, at a mall nearby, and that was when I was a kid. I've seen other types of parrots, but I've, I've only seen one macaw in my life, but... Um, yeah, I love parrots, would love to have one. I'm very aware that my life is definitely not set up for that, but uh, they're, they're uh, beautiful, amazing, intriguing animals, and uh, would love to interact with one that can talk. A lot of YouTube channels with people who have parrots that can talk, but uh, and I watch those occasionally because they're, they're so interesting to watch. So anyway, that's my book review of Parrots, the book. And I would recommend it if you can if you can find it. Although I don't know, I mean, I suppose you might want to go with something more modern if you're if you're a little bit worried about maybe some things in this book being slightly out of date. But I really kind of doubt that you. My layman opinion is that I doubt you can go wrong. Of course, you know you can just look all this stuff up on the internet now too. But I kind of wanted the experience of reading this book, and I'm glad that I did it. And it didn't take long either. So thanks for watching. Like and comment. Subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next video.